There's new research with alarming results that's changing the way doctors treat cervical cancer. Laparoscopic surgery is a less invasive procedure that involves a small incision in the abdomen. It led to a higher risk of death from cervical cancer, and that's compared with patients who had a traditional hysterectomy. Now, this is according to two studies published in the New England Journal of Medicine. After the less invasive surgery, the cancer was four times, think about that, four times more likely to return. Some hospitals like Johns Hopkins in Maryland and MD Anderson Cancer Center that's in Texas have now switched back to the traditional surgery. Our Dr. David Agus is an oncologist and leads the USC Westside Cancer Center. He joins us from Los Angeles bright and early to discuss. Always good to see you, David Agus. Good morning, Gail. So, so let's start with this. Normally, if you hear less invasive, if I was a patient, I'd think that's a great thing. Why is that not, not the case in this particular well, procedure? Yeah, less invasive means shorter hospitalization, less infection, and over the last decade was a dramatic move, so most surgeries are done less invasive. But in this case, obviously from this study we learned, and it was surprising, is that dramatically higher recurrence rate and death rate. And we think it's probably because somehow how you manipulate the tissue when you do this, or the fact that you have to blow up the abdomen with air while you do the surgery so you can see things. One of those actually causes the cancer to behave differently, and we're seeing here a negative effect on patients, and it's pretty scary. So what's causing the cancer to reoccur here? We just don't know, and I think that's part of the problem, is that we don't know or else we would stop doing that. Yes. But clearly, you know, the FDA regulates technology, but not how we use it. Mm -hmm. And so we as a medical community need to take a step back and say, hey, listen, we got to do studies to show it's safe and the outcome is right before we use technologies in patients across the country. I but know you call this a wake-up call. Do you think it extends beyond cervical cancer? I certainly do. I think all technologies. There's a move now to do things quicker with technology, and we have to step back and say, does it make sense for the cancer? Obviously, if you're a patient, you want the best cancer outcome. You want to be alive to play with your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't care about an yeah, extra day or two in the hospital. Right. And so the key is that metric. Yeah, so David, stepping back, is, it makes sense, except that surgeries still have to take place. So what, what does one do now if one is a doctor and has trained on these less invasive techniques? Well, I think we have to go back to the open procedure. And so doctors were trained on both, and they need to go back to the way it's been done, really, until the last decade where this transition happened. But what about the patient? I mean, that patient over the last year or two who had the laparoscopic surgery, they need to go back and talk to their doctor and say, hey, listen, maybe my surveillance, you have to look about recurrence in me a little bit differently because I probably have a higher rate of recurrence than you originally thought. But doctor, you, we know that you are a proponent of technological innovation. What does this say about how that relates to science? Uh, you're right. I mean, I love technology, and I think technology is going to be very important to make all of us live longer and better. But at the same time, we have to vet technology. We need a process in place so we can actually use it correctly. We have to do the studies because they're not required now. We can use technology however we want when it's on the market. But again, I think you as a patient, me as a patient, have to go to the doctor and say, is there data that this actually is better than the standard procedure before we use a technology? All right, David, thank you.